Okay. Itamex Kanatani. Good morning. It is sometime around 0730 in the AM on Tuesday, January 7th, 2020 in the lunar cycle Misamiko Komiatos. I'm here at Shpopikimi starting my regular morning round. It's minus 7 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't really feel that cold. And I think it might be starting to snow. I feel something like snowflakes on my hitting my face. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what's in store for today. It's an average kind of a day for me. I need to be at the studio. I need to take care of a little bit of small mammal business. Uh, I don't have any animals in traps, but I have a client who wants to meet with me. And I have traps to pull. Whether I get to all of that today or not, I don't know. Might have a friend coming down uh, who's also involved in this project with the artisans as a funder so he might come down and meet with me today Chelsea's sick she's been sick since the weekend um, pretty bad maybe an ear infection something of this sort so she's she's got in to see a doctor today should be going to see him this afternoon and I don't know kids are at school <laughs> school and daycare and I'm out doing my morning round so we'll see where the day leads us Not really sure what it was, but walking along that levee here on the wide south pool of the pond by the South Pond Spring and looking down into the forest floor of the Owlwood, I was suddenly inspired to get down there on the, on the, amidst the trees and move around a little bit. <laughs> and I do mean a, a little bit. Um, I think I think I spent about five minutes clumsily and somewhat painfully moving around a um, little bit of stretching a little bit of flex in my legs a little bit of kicking a little bit of punching um, and I don't know I think when I was in San Francisco the other day, I was really reminded out in Golden Gate Park in the mornings, you'd see, you know, these groups of um, elderly Chinese people doing Tai Chi. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago when I would spend every morning outside doing some martial arts not Tai Chi mind you but <laughs> you know a lot of shadow boxing and um, other things and just some fitness stuff some forms but I really enjoyed that it really I really felt healthy um, doing that and I'd like to return to it you know maybe not every morning but I'd like to do more of that and make it some part of my routine um, as I as I hopefully become increasingly return to 
mental and full mental and, and physical health. <laughs> um, yeah, yesterday actually I was going through some of the things from the Jeep and I came across um, an envelope, a brown envelope uh, that was decorated uh, obviously to my eyes by Isabel and um, with the I love you daddy and all of this for Father's Day and opened it up and there was a little card and there was a you know crayon drawn card and there was a um, this uh, ceramic like a little tile with uh, a painting of uh, Derek or another magpie on it and just treasures you know just treasures given that I don't get to see Belle anymore um, you know someday that'll probably change when she's an adult she can decide as she wants but right now I'm separated and that's part of the stuff that you know is still unresolved for me but I'm getting used to the the you know reality that um, that I don't get to have them around me anymore so <clears throat> didn't mean to go down a <laughs> down some kind of negative road there's a uh, the city parks crew over here. I guess there was a tree fallen or something across the path, so they're out cutting it this morning. Um, Matunni, yesterday I was out here and there were deer, um, the deer that I had been missing from the absinthe field um, turned up. And there was two groups of them. One of them I encountered just down here in the wet meadows area. And I got a little bit of film of that one. Or at least a few deer I got in pretty good range of. Wasn't able to see what they were eating. <laughs> Which has been my question of, of recent. Whenever I encounter the deer, what are they eating? Um, but I should probably expand those questions at some point. And, and actually maybe even just commit a day to spend with a group of deer. Uh, that would be pretty revealing, hey? Pretty, might learn a few things. Um, anyhow, and then I ran into a second group kind of over by the Northwood. So, all together I'd say maybe 13 or 14 deer between the... Uh, two groups I saw so that probably comprises close to what I was seeing out on the absinthe field before I left for San Francisco they've just moved positions back into the brush for whatever reason I think there you know there's something probably to do with the snow and when there's levels of snow in the forest Maybe they're more prone to be out there. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, but you do definitely see big aggregates of whitetails in exposed areas, you know, this time of year. Out on the prairies, too. Um, whereas most of, the top, most of the year, they're in the thick of the forest. So... See if we encounter any. Just heard a chickadee. Nah, doesn't look like we're gonna see any of those deer today. At least not in this segment of the forest because probably because the park workers were up here chopping up that tree, right? So any deer that would have been down in this area probably moved north into the Owlwood or even under the bridge and over to the RV park area.
it wasn't so slippery, I'd consider doing some running. But with the kind of flash freeze that we've had, oh, there's a flicker. It's everybody kind of sounding off. <laughs> no, no peep from the uh, from the shrike yet, though. Or the shrikes. Saw three of them here Sunday morning. Down that end, though. Where the little birds hang. And just as I thought, I'm now passing by the Northwood where any of the deer from the forest main would have ran to. And here I find the little family. <laughs> I don't see any others. But like I say, they could have proceeded north into the edge of the forest that way or even under the bridge and retreated entirely to the RV park area. Just rolling through North Lethbridge on my way to meet with a client and friend, Rob, for some kind of a proposition he has, probably regarding skunk trapping at some of his landscape clients' homes. And yeah, it's probably an hour now that the studio has been open, and in that time, we've had pretty much blizzard conditions. My understanding is that some of the rural areas like on the blood reserve and standoff and such uh, a lot of the organizations are just shutting down for the day because the road conditions are not going to get any better it's just going to get more rank from here so i'm glad i'm in town and that i don't really have to cross the river for anything today as far as i know I haven't got any skunk calls to bring me to the west side or anything so i can just stay over here and um move a couple of kilometers between work and, and home and such. This is going to be my longest drive of the day right now just to go see Rob out here on his property, kind of the northeast edge of town. Um, but once that's done, yeah, I plan to stick pretty much pretty close and tight to home <laughs> as we hunker down for the storm. It's going to be a storm followed by a cold. We're, we're scheduled to get like minus 30 degree weather here uh, by maybe toward the end of the weekend or something so and next week I guess it's gonna be just brutal cold which is not unsurprising it's the time of year so anyhow let's try to get to my destination safe <laughs> at Rob's property now gave me a, a good um, he does garlic he's been the last few years he's been growing garlic out here on his property and he gave me a big old braid of garlic you know monster monster garlic um, but what he really wanted to show me was this Quonset here which he's preparing as a store as a storefront for his farm here and he's thinking 
um, some of my students, some of the artisans might want to sell their goods in the in the store. So we're gonna go take a look at it, and uh, I'm sure they would. We're gonna, we're gonna check it out in any case. Well, it's always kind of been an antique store, but then. I got divorced the first time and then we were moving to the coast so I left everything going. I never finished the outside of the building so a bunch of the boards fell off. So we're just going to put it all back together, putting a little awning that comes out here and down. Oh, just yeah. a tiny little, so it looks like that western store. Yeah. You know what I mean? Turn yep. of the century kind of thing. It looks, yeah, it's got that, it's got that front, hey? The yeah, western and that's exactly front. what I wanted on the front like that. But I've got, I got all my flashing so I can put, just sharpen it up so it kind of matches the plate a little more, you know what I mean? Gives it a little more. Got a big door. So it used to be a lower driveway, so we had to fill it up. Oh, yeah. Concrete floor and hit the leaves. And so it's going to be just my little kind of western store, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so I had to shut off the camera there because I noticed that that copywritten music was playing. And that's not going to be any good for my monetization on YouTube if it wasn't too much already. Any case, now I am back on the road, gonna go stop by the house and drop off some Tylenol and ibuprofen for Chels. Hopefully she gets in to see her doctor and everything works out this afternoon. And then I'll take Polly out even though he won't be able to do his regular walkie walk in this kind of condition. And back to the studio for me after that, bringing a garlicky gift for the students. <laughs> it's a lot of garlic. Whoo, Rob's garage. He must he must have that same problem I got with skunks where he goes everywhere and, and people are like, what is that garlic smell? <laughs> oh, slippery, slippery. time for students to select their fabrics for their dresses and ribbon shirts and such and so we're gonna just do all of that here at Marshall's fabric or Marshall fabrics <laughs> but one of the biggest fabric stores in Lethbridge let's go in and have a look Yeah, in their yards on meters. Or okay, this should be enough. enough. So does it make a difference if it's this straight? Because we're going to be adjusting the pattern. <laughs> well, when you take a look at your, when you're making. <laughs> the boys are having a bit of a difficult time choosing their stuff looking at some solid prints see Barry has some black Barry was gonna use this like the night at the Roxbury oh he should <laughs> <laughs> should do that just make like a tank top for the gym yeah <laughs> <laughs> on the side <laughs> Yeah, the boys aren't boys aren't quite sure. Oh, so that won't work. So I have to buy the half the other way and fold it the other way and iron it. Well, you can try it. See why not? That, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess if you want to try it, I guess it's only um, 
Yeah. If you're cutting on the, the grain, it's, you know, like sometimes, like when you're working with time, right? And you're making moccasins, and how one side is, you know, one way is stretchier, and the other way is not so forgiving or stretchy. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, this is how, when you're working with um, material, these That's are the, the things same, that you hey? need to consider. Oh, little bag. I made um berry one too. I don't know unless you want to go. Okay. I have some at home. We could just wait. I can check it for the camera. <laughs> <laughs>